All right, welcome back to part three of our lecture. Now, I just want to spend a few minutes on something here. Um, we said that this thing that your book weirdly decides to call the Bernoulli's equation is definitely not Bernoulli's equation. Well, if that isn't Bernoulli's equation, what, what is? Well, it turns out Bernoulli's equation is this thing that's up here in the top left corner of the screen. And what it is, is that it tells us, well, let's actually pick this apart. One half u squared. Well, u is the speed of the wind. One half a speed squared. That ought to sound like kinetic energy to you. Okay, kinetic energy would be like one half mu squared. But so like this is like kinetic energy per unit mass. We've divided through by the mass. Now we've got another term that has a p over rho. It's got pressure and it's got density. I don't know what to call that thing. It's not yet. But it's, it's there. There's a term that is gz. Now, that might not ring a bell to you, but you actually saw that term when you took general physics. G, the acceleration of gravity, times Z, the height you are above the ground, is potential energy. Uh, you know, you did examples of that in like physics lab where you had the potential energy of the little car before you ran it down a ramp or something like that, and the potential energy was G times Z. All right. Is equal to some CB. CB is going to turn out to be just a constant. It's actually a constant you can't know. Uh, there's no way to know what the sum would be, uh, but what we do know is that once you have a value, like for a given air parcel or whatever, CB is not going to change, at least not over relatively short periods of time. So I don't yet know exactly what that is, but if I get rid of that potential energy type term, I'm not really worried about like moving my air parcel huge distances uh, you know, where the potential energy is changing a great deal. Well, we have a relatively simple equation here where the sum of two things equals another thing on the right-hand side, and that thing on the right-hand side doesn't change. So no matter what, we got to make the, the two things on the left-hand side kind of have a, uh, a balance here. If one of them increases, the other one's going to have to decrease. And if the other one decreases, the other one has to increase. So we kind of have created a, a nifty little trick here with Bernoulli's equation that says, you know, like, for example, if I increase the kinetic energy of my air parcel by, like, making it, you know, have stronger winds, well, apparently, then that first part of that term, 1 half u squared, is going to increase. To make this whole thing still equal a constant, that means p over rho is going to decrease, which means i got to make the pressure go down. So if my flow increases, the pressure has to go down. Huh. That's weird, because that doesn't jive with our understanding of pressure. Remember, we thought of pressure as like the weight of the air above you. But this is a modification to that. Yeah, it, 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 the right word is hydrostatic. The hydrostatic pressure that is just weights due to the weight of the air above you. But this is like a little a change to that then. But the speed of the wind matters too. And the speed will be less as the flow, the pressure will be less rather as the speed increases. Now, this is often, and not altogether correctly, uh, used to explain how aircraft cross-sections, uh, wings work. Uh, that's supposed to be, like, a cr that little black shape there is supposed to be the cross-section of a wing of an aircraft. Like, you're looking at the wing from the edge, and you can see the air parcels, those little dots, are flowing over the wing. And what your high school science teacher tells you, or something like that, is that the wind flows faster over the top of the wing than over the bottom of the wing. And you can kind of do that, if you see that, if you watch individual air parcels moving over that wing there. And therefore, by Bernoulli's equation, the pressure on the bottom of the wing is higher than the pressure on the top of the wing. And that creates a force that is pushing upward on the wing. And that's kind of true. Okay, well, it is, it's true in the sense that, like, the wind is faster on the top of the wing than on the bottom of the wing, and so on. Why? Your high school science teacher probably did not tell you the right answer there. This is not the right time to explain how airfoils work and so on. But the basic idea that there should be a uh, difference in the pressure on the top and the bottom of the wing caused by the differences in the speed of the flow on the top and the bottom of the wing is true. And that is, in fact, an application of Bernoulli's equation. Anytime you have flow that is moving faster, the, flow, the pressure inside the flow is, in fact, lower. Maybe not a lot, but enough to make a big difference. In fact, you could take this idea that we've had so far about gap winds and combine it with what we really mean by Bernoulli's equation to create something that's called the Venturi effect. Now, the Venturi effect is a really interesting little detail that, like, 
is how a number of phenomena in like your car and how a Bunsen burner works and so on. But the effect that we're going to be talking about today, let's just use the example being a gas grill. You have a barbecue uh, with a gas, you know, that runs on propane tanks or whatever. You've got a gas there. Now, what's going to happen here is we're going to have a hose attached to a tank, and that hose is going to carry propane gas from the tank over to where you want it to burn as part of your gas grill. And you're going to see how the gap wind effect and the Bernoulli effect combined to create the so-called Venturi effect that's going to work with this here. So let me show you what's going on here. Leading away from the tank of propane itself is a relatively wide hose. And that wide hose is carrying propane, a very flammable gas, but pure propane. There's no oxygen, so it can't burn. They carry this gas through this relatively wide hose from the tank up toward where the gas is going to burn. This gas is moving relatively slowly through this relatively wide hose. Just before you get to where you want the gas to burn, they narrow the hose dramatically. There will be a, like a nozzle to the hose, or the hose gets really narrow right there inside of a part of the grill called the venturi. Okay. When this happens, you get, a gap, you get a gap wind effect, where the natural gas, as it squeezes through the little gap right there, is going to accelerate dramatically. So, whereas the flow of, nat of propane through the wide hose was relatively slow, as it gets through that narrow gap right there, it's going to accelerate dramatically and move into a much narrower hose. Now, once that flow has accelerated like that, it will now move through another stretch of the hose that is typically somewhat open. Like maybe it has little holes in it or maybe it's made of mesh. On my gas grill, it's actually made of like um, window screen. Now you might think, what kind of hose is made of window screen? Wouldn't that leak all over the place? Yes, but here's the deal. That flow from the propane tank that is now moving very fast by Bernoulli's equation is also very low pressure. Well, lower pressure than it was before anyway. And so, yeah, the hose is leaky, but the pressure inside the hose is less than the pressure outside, so it leaks the opposite way, air from the outside gets into the hose. That's where the oxygen is coming from. Air is getting sucked into that leaky part of the hose because the pressure inside that hose is lower than the pressure outside. See how we've taken the gap wind effect and we have combined it with the Bernoulli equation to create this little apparatus here that safely mixes oxygen with a ridiculously flammable gas like propane. So oxygen comes in through those leaky parts of the hose. Then the hose turns back into like a, you know, they, they switch to back to like a solid hose or whatever. They widen the hose back out again to slow the flow down. And then they ignite it, the mixture of oxygen and propane to create the flame. There is actually a little device inside of your gas grill called the Venturi. And the Venturi is this little screen or device. Uh, here's an example of one. I don't know if you can quite see what's going on right here, but they have low pressure uh, gas uh, coming in for the side through that little nozzle. It then mixes with air coming in from uh, the side there to create a mixture of oxygen and the gas, and then it ignites on the far side there. The venturi is a very important part of how your gas grill works, and it tends to be a place that spiders and wasps and stuff like to live, and they build their nests around it, and they block up all the little holes, and then your gas grill doesn't work quite right. The Venturi effect is totally cool. Now, we use it like um, it's part of the story of how like a Bunsen burner works. It's part of the story of how various parts of your car's engine work. Um, it's this nifty trick combining our understanding of gap winds and Bernou uh, Bernoulli's equation. Now, I told you we'd get a little into the sticks or a little bit into the weeds, if you will, on that business of Bernoulli and gap and Venturi and so on uh, there. We'll go back and get more into topography in just a little bit, and orography and so on. But before we do, let's answer a couple quick questions about this whole business of gap winds and the Bernoulli effect, and um, sorry, Bernoulli equation and the Venturi effect. Question six: Bernoulli's equation would tell us that during a Tawantepecker, a barometer in Chevela Pass would read a blank pressure than what you would expect just based on the mass of the air above the pass. During a Tawantepecker. 
If you knew the mass of the air above you, you'd think you would know the pressure, but in fact you wouldn't get quite that same pressure measured at a barometer. Would the pressure that you measure be higher or lower? Go ahead and make a choice from those two options and get a little feedback before you move on to question seven.